Hello, I'm Andy the Maniacal Cinephile, and here are my thoughts on the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, Leatherface. Help. Texas Chainsaw 3D, rebooting the series again, made money despite not being very good. So instead of a sequel to 3D, the filmmakers decide to tell Leatherface's origin story in a prequel to the original classic. I thought they already did a prequel. No, that was a prequel to the reboot. Which reboot? The timeline is very stitched together. The eighth film in the series is directed by French filmmakers Alexandre Bustio and Julian Mori, best known for the horror film Inside. It went through a period of rewrites, reshoots, and then was shelved for a year. Many questioned if we would ever see it, but it's finally viewable on DirecTV. Yay, that means we don't have to wear a disguise to the theater. Aw, oh, but I just picked out a new one. This new Leatherface movie has something to prove. Hopefully it's better than Texas Chainsaw 3D, and being an origin story doesn't ruin too much of the character's mystique. What? How did this get in here? In 1955, years before the events of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, in the early days of the infamous Sawyer clan, the youngest boy, Jed, is taken to a mental hospital after an accident leaves Sheriff Hartman's daughter dead. I can relate. I'm always accidentally finding dead bodies around here, too. Ten years later, a riot erupts at the mental institution Gorman's house, and four mental patients, Ike, Clarice, Jackson, and Bud, escape while kidnapping a young nurse named Lizzie. Pursued by the deranged sheriff out to avenge his daughter's death, the disturbed teens go on a violent road trip from hell, molding one of them into the legendary killer known as Leatherface. A name feared by hippies and front doors. Look what your brother did to that dog! Stephen Dorff plays Texas Ranger Hal Hartman. He has a vendetta against the Sawyers and is ruthless in tracking down the Gorman kids. His character is very similar to Sheriff Wydell in that I should be rooting for him, but he's a miserable bastard. And since the movie mainly follows the Gorman kids around, much like the Devil's Rejects, the film lacks a proper hero. I'll take all yours, Verna. All of them. Lily Taylor plays Verna Sawyer, Leatherface's mother. I thought she was the aunt. Eh, knowing the Sawyers, she's probably both. Taylor's performance is great, but this new and important matriarch's marriage to a Mr. Carson has left me with some questions. Questions like who is he, where is he, and why was this shot in Bulgaria? A younger version of Drayton Sawyer appears throughout, but he's poorly cast and written. During the original dinner scene, Drayton states he takes no pleasure in killing and he'll have no part of it. The hitchhiker at one point even yells, Leatherface do all the work! You don't like it, ain't that right? You're just a cook! However, in the prequel, Drayton doesn't hesitate to kill. He even tries to force Jed into killing his first victim. So I don't think the filmmakers quite understood the Drayton character. He's no longer the conflicted schizo. <laughs> also, the prequel is missing that classic Drayton dialogue. Half-wit. Little coon shit. You shut up, you bitch hog! You damn fool! You ruined the door! I'm watching you like a shit hawk. Wait, that one was Mr. Leahy. Shit clock's dickin' bubs for you, your shit rats, and your shit turd friends. Oh yeah. Lizzie is the nurse who is kidnapped on her first day by the patients. Gotta hate those Mondays. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Lizzie is sweet and seems to care about Bud, the silent giant who is equally gentle and vicious. There's also some chemistry there with Jackson, the handsome country boy with a heart of gold. Get that teenage romance crap out of my Leatherface movie! Then there's the psychotic Ike and Clarice. Whenever they aren't killing for fun, they're making love on top of corpses. 
Eh, I've had more awkward threesomes with myself. To me, the plot and characters so far are interesting. It's when the film pulls the trigger on the Leatherface transformation that it nosedives. And I really can't discuss those issues without getting into spoilers. First off, when this movie was announced, I groaned at the synopsis. Something about four mental patients escaping, and you'll have to guess which one of them becomes Leatherface? No, it should be pretty obvious. The writer, Seth Sherwood, spends too much time trying to trick the audience that Bud is Leatherface. It's an obvious and distracting red herring. Especially because, thanks to the reshoots, we see Jed as a perfectly normal kid in the opening scene. Instead, the writer went for a lame twist, and it's revealed that Jackson is Jed Sawyer. Hell, if you're going for something unexpected, why not have Clarice become Leatherface? What? Sherwood chose not to have Leatherface be born as intellectually disabled, finding the story of a functional person that has their mental capabilities reduced to be more fascinating. Interesting, but one, Sherwood may find that fascinating, but it's not Leatherface. Two, it may have worked, but they botched it. Four, I forgot three. The writer suggests that any normal person could become Leatherface after a bad day, which I disagree. That means in a parallel universe, Leatherface is a regular person working at a deli. No bullet that day, no Leatherface. It's more tragic, but Millennium Films needs to realize Leatherface is not the hero of the story. The original Leatherface was born and raised to become a butcher. If I were to ever become disfigured, I'm not going to start killing people with a chainsaw, skin their face off, and then make bone furniture. Okay, maybe we're a bad example. Now, I read the leaked rough draft of the script, and sadly, the one thing I kind of liked, they took out. We learned that Jackson was sent to many foster homes. One foster mom wanted a girl and dressed him as one for years. She even had the gaudy makeup later seen on the pretty woman mask. See, now that would help explain some of Jed's identity issues. Instead, they do nothing. The final movie portrays Jackson as a normal enough kid without any apparent issues. Which Leatherface clearly has plenty. <laughs> Now, I've talked about what Leatherface isn't, so let's talk about what he is. According to director Toby Hooper and actor Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface is entirely devoid of personality beyond the mask he wears and what his family commands him to do. He has his killing mask, but can also get dolled up for dinner. Leatherface was born with mental disabilities and can barely be held accountable for his crimes. In the original, he's basically a big, frightened animal protecting his home from intruders. <laughs> Leatherface is essentially the big, dumb Sawyer family watchdog. Sure, he commits gruesome acts of violence, but he doesn't know any better. The Sawyers have been raised to think humans are cattle ever since Grandpa lost his job at the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jackson grew up away from the Sawyers. He barely remembers them, yet joins them for some reason. Bud would have been a better fit for Leatherface. He has the mental disabilities, the size, and strength. He's exactly what I picture a teenage Leatherface being. Hardcore fans of the character aren't looking for a desperate twist. And no, just because Toby Hooper is listed as an executive producer doesn't mean he gave any money or input. This is often a legacy credit. Ooh, Andy, did you notice the mistake when they were changing? Bud had a shirt on, then off, then on again. No, I didn't catch that. Another thing that bothered me was Jackson's size. He needs to put on some weight and grow six inches, which is unlikely at age 18. It bothered me that Lizzie was taller than him, and he could barely wield the chainsaw. 
I don't see Tiny Jackson lifting people on meat hooks. And why does he wear people's faces? Because Leatherface movie? It felt very tacked on at the end. I never pictured the original Leatherface as disfigured, but lacking in his own personality. Much like Ed Gein, he didn't wear people's faces to hide, but to become someone else. In the end, Jackson is the complete opposite of what Leatherface should be. The transformation isn't satisfying because being shot in the face and... rejected by a girl is very weak motivation for this particular character. Yeah, Leatherface's dance with romance the first time was a bit of a stretch. <laughs> Under a different title, this would be okay. If you cut out the Sawyer family bookends, it'd be a well-made, brutal road movie. However, its main goal is to be a Leatherface origin story, and it fails. Much like Franklin, Trying to take a leak. The film lacks any satisfying motivation or resemblance to Gunnar Hansen's Leatherface. It has more plot than the average Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, and I applaud them for trying something different. In the end, when it comes to Leatherface, I'd rather not know the who or the why. It's quite simple. The saw is family. This has been Andy, the Maniacal Cinephile. Thanks for watching. And see you next time.